Hello there, welcome to Obsidian Fleet's Fleetcast. Uh, today we've got uh, the beginning of a new series that we're going to uh, be posting here on our channel. Uh, that is where I, Paul, am going to be playing the Stellaris Star Trek mod, New Civilizations. Uh, we'll have a few episodes of this, we'll see how we get on. Uh, at some point in the future we may even consider expanding the series and having some votes to see if uh, you want us to try some different things. Uh, but for now I'm going to get stuck into a game, and if you've never seen um, Stellaris or even this mod before, um, I can tell you this is one of my favourite games uh, that I've I kind of, I've played uh, over recent years, uh, and this mod, uh, if you are into Star Trek at all, is absolutely phenomenal. Um, you get to play through the whole history of the Star Trek universe, right back from uh, the Enterprise era, r right the way through to post DS9, uh, and even into kind of some of the newer stuff like Picard. This this mod is being updated very very regularly. Uh, as you can see, you can play as all of these different races and factions in uh, the Star Trek universe. There's even some alternate universe ones here down at the bottom. Uh, you can play as um, Borg Temporal Incursion, uh, which uh, essentially asks if if uh, First Contact went the other way, um, the film, and the Borg won, um, what would have happened, that kind of thing. So there's some great alternate universe things to try out. You can try the Mirror Universe um, even. But for this game, we're gonna uh, we're gonna start off with your, your standard United Earth. We're gonna go uh, humans. Um, the United Earth is a planetary state created through the unification of the nations of Earth following first contact with the Vulcans. With its capital based in Paris, the United Earth government administers the entire solar system. The horrors of the Third World War and the subsequent prosperity provided by the Vulcans has shaped human society to value peaceful coexistence and the exploration of the unknown. So what do we get as humans? Well, we are t uh, natural sociologists, uh, which boosts our research in society, and we are talented, which uh, gives us some leader boosts. Uh, we are democratic, of course, um, with some unique uh, elements to our society with um, certain boosts uh, and additional modifiers here, as you can see. Um, traditionally, we're pacifist, xenophile, egalitarian people. Um, I will try and stick to playing as uh, pacifist, xenophile, egalitarian as I can. I, I like to try and stay fairly within the canon for this run, but we'll see what happens, what events crop up, and, and how things play out. So we're going to um, we're going to play this uh, on a small kind of alpha quadrant map. This isn't going to be the full huge uh, whole galaxy, mainly because my rig can't necessarily cope with it at the later stages. Uh, we're going to play on a fairly standard setup for myself here. Um, few different AI empires will keep things fairly simple for now. Uh, I'm not going to put Iron Man on for this just in case something goes completely wrong with my computer but we'll see what happens here. And I'm going to kick play and we're going to load into the game. We're going to see how things start off. Um, as I say I hope this series um, develops into a few episodes. We'll see how we get on. Um, I, I probably won't be live streaming them um, but there'll be recordings like this one that we upload from time to time. Uh, we'll see how I progress through the history of uh, the Federation. We'll see how uh, things progress in terms of who we connect with, what uh, what other races and uh, factions we encounter along the way, what alliances are made, whether we can indeed form the Federation or we go down a different path. I don't know. We'll see what happens. There's plenty of uh, random events that can happen through the course of this. Um, and yeah, I've played this. I'm pretty familiar with the, the mod itself, so... Uh, I'm fairly confident I know what's coming and how to play. And decisions. here we go. Culminating in the Third World War in 2053. Emerging from this post-atomic horror, the so, struggled to survive until the science with that voiceover, I will just give you a little bit of an overview of where we're at. This is uh, the Sol system. We have two colonies at the moment. We have Earth and Mars. Uh, Earth obviously quite well developed. Um, as you can see, to seek out new uh, it's decently uh, to populated at the moment, and we have Mars, which is a little bit, um, shall we say, underdeveloped at this point in time. Uh, there will be options to sort that out later on. Let's have a look at uh, the way things are set up at the moment. So we start off, as I say, with just the solar system. Um, you, we are United Earth, as things stand. We have already got connection with the Vulcan High Command over here. Um, first contact has been made, and we're a few years on from that now. 
Uh, there is another empire over here, the, these aliens, in the Teller system. I wonder who they will be. If you know anything about Star Trek, you'll f figure that out fairly quickly. So, uh, just to give you an introduction to where things are at in this mod and, and kind of some of the differences with um, the base game of Stellaris, if you've ever played this, things are mostly the same. There's a lot of the most similar resources at the top. There's a, a Nanites up here and Ketrasol White. We probably won't need any of those things. Uh, an additional thing you think about is crew. Uh, that can be quite key early on and quite a restricting factor, so we'll have to work on that as well as we go. Um, what else have we got here? We've got the Earth Defence Fleet, uh, headed up by Admiral Hortensia Rosario, uh, with three Freedom-type scouts and an Emmet type the USS Janus. Uh, defending our borders at the moment. Um, so let's have a look here. We got the USS Belfast, our first science ship under Nuru Azikewi. I'm going to butcher that, aren't I? Um, so what we're going to do, we'll just send you out exploring over here for now. And then we also have the USS Brilliant, which is brilliant uh, as a construction ship that will help us be expanding our borders soon. So let's have a look at the research situation now. Let's, let's have a think about what we're going to pick from here. Uh, I'm going to start with simple... Um, with some of the quicker uh, research options and let's have a look what do we want the Ganymede class scout might not be a terrible idea but I'm gonna go for the engineering research boost to begin with uh, we have made first contact which I believe is yeah over here in the telesystem so let's get one of our uh, envoys dealing with that straight away and I think we're good to be cracking on and wait to see how things go on. So let's uh, tick time on and let's see how far we get with this so far. We're going to be doing a bit of exploration at the moment. While things are kicking off, uh, we can have a look at a few of these things uh, that we have going on along Initiating here. Communications. Uh, we've already got some contact from the Vulcans establishing an embassy. We'll go ahead and do that. So, um, yeah, we have a number of leaders available to us at the moment. Different, uh, we've got a couple of commanders here. Um, some additional scientists which we'll be making use of in a moment because um, I will be looking to uh, expand our science fleet and uh, in terms of fleet management now I probably won't be doing too much with the fleet designer at this point but to give you an idea of what we start off with uh, we have the Emmet class frigate um, quite small uh, not massively well uh, armed and the freedom class scout which uh, if you've seen uh, some of the newer Star Trek films, you might recognise that ship as well. Um, indeed, the Franklin class. So that's uh, a science ship as well as a scout ship. We've got construction ships. And uh, we've got some discovered. nice light, event, light defence platforms. Aha, okay. So we've got our first research complete. That's great. Let's have a look at what we can do next. Okay. Well, we're going we're gonna to boost our energy weapons fire rate at the moment. Uh, have we got enough? Yes, we have. I'm going to start work on another science ship, I think, uh, to move things forward. So, as you can tell, there's a slow progress with this, and we've got first contact pending already. So, we're making progress with that. Okay. So, here we go the USS Bonaventure. Uh, which we'll put Enrique Gonzalez in command of. And we're going to just wander over to, to Wolf 359. Nothing bad's ever going to happen there. And now we can start to look at our tradition tree. Now we've got a few options in here. Um, typically I might start off with some expansion to, uh, to traditions to help with our influence costs reductions in terms of expanding quickly. Uh, there's a few different ones in here. Some of these we won't be able to access Um uh, but what is probably a good start to pick up early on is the Discovery Tradition council Tree, available. which gives us some new council agendas, but also uh, starts off with some little boosts to anomaly research. So let's move things forward and see where we go up to with this. Technology discovered. Okay, engineering research. Ooh, I like the Intrepid Destroyer. That's a good shout at this point. I'll go for that. Might take slightly longer than other research projects, but I quite like having the um, upgrades to my fleet early on. Um, you may well see why fairly soon. Some on here. A matter of time. Yes. An unknown source of chroniton particles has been detected in the wolf vicinity of Wolf 359-1A. Let's, uh, let's see what happens with that. 
evading hostiles. Okay, so we've got some new uniforms. Um, an asteroid is heading towards the planet Mars. This asteroid must be destroyed before it's too late. This is an ill omen. updated. Okay, as things are progressive for what we'll do is we're going to set the uh, uh, defense fleet to an aggressive stance. That means that they'll go and engage that um, asteroid and any other hostiles that might cross our paths. A new uniform design has been made available. Let's just have a quick glance at this. So yeah, we've got some of the more kind of later um, Enterprise era uh, uniforms out. And our fleet is going to try and engage this asteroid that's heading for Sol, for uh, Mars rather. Let's have a look at this. So you can see here the uh, fleet's engaging with that. I can hopefully destroy that asteroid uh, before it hits Mars, which would be a disaster. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade that. Okay, the source of the chroniton particles appears to be traceable to a small vessel in orbit of Wolf 3591A. Sensors are unable to penetrate its hull and it appears to be drifting. Let's go ahead and open hailing frequencies. Ah, Captain Enrique Gonzalez, please move about one meter to your right. Confused, the captain moves aside. Human materializes on the bridge. Excellent! Now, my name is Professor Belinda Rasmussen. Now, I've traveled back in time two centuries. Study the crew of the USS Bonaventure. The exploits in this of this ship and its captain, Enrique Gonzalez, are legendary in my time, she says. Now, uh, if you've ever seen uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, you might recognize where this is, is coming from. So, uh, let's make a choice here. I'm going to assist this historian, see what happens. Well, uh, their time on the, on the ship is Difficult for many of the crew, a constant stream of questionnaires and her not-so-subtle condensation do little to ingratiate. After a while, though, Captain Gonzalez strikes up a conversation and the two discuss United, his United Earth history up to the current year. Belinda Rasmussen appears horrified, however, after accidentally referencing a series of events that have yet to have occurred four years hence. Pleading to be allowed to preserve the timeline, she begs the captain to allow her to perform a memory wipe of their conversation. Ooh, now then, would we allow this memory wipe? I am going to say, let's allow this memory wipe. We don't want to contaminate the timeline. So, uh, as we agree to the procedure, the memory wipe's completed. Uh, Belinda Rasmussen insists she's fully trained in this. We trust her. Um... The next day, Belinda Rasmussen departs the ship with her shuttle disappearing in a burst of chroniton particles. So the result of this is unfortunate. Uh, Enrique Gonzalez gains minus 100 experience. Okay, well, I don't know if there'll be any consequences to that. I guess we'll find out later. Construction complete. Technology discovered. Survey complete. Survey complete. Ah, oh, fantastic. The asteroid that was approaching Mars has been destroyed. The jubilant citizens on the planet have taken to the streets in celebration. And we've discovered that we gained some minerals out of it. That's fantastic. So we gained 600 odd minerals from destroying that asteroid. Well done, Starfleet. You've come through again. Well done, Earth Defense Fleet and Admiral Rosario. So, several plants native to Mars, where we recently established a colony, exude copious amounts of a pollen with an astounding chemical complexity. A special research project has been prepared for further study of this flora. Now, that's interesting. I'm not sure what flora that could be on Mars. Uh, we've been given a special project to do a floral study. Um, so we'll update. see what happens with that. Let's have a look at the situation log here. We can conduct a study here with one of our science ships. 
So maybe I might reroute one of my science vessels to take a look at this. Or in fact, let, I think maybe it's time to get an additional science ship on board. Let's build another science ship to uh, undertake that task for us, shall we? All right, here we have the USS Zhengzhou uh, recently deployed. And we've got some options for captains. Let's have a look at these candidates. Brett Kavanagh, who's a doctor. Holy Church gives some bonuses to dilithium and surveying, but has this insider trading perk, which doesn't seem like much of a perk. And then Ilza von Gebster, who is more of an engineer from the looks of things and has an additional trait we can pick. Um, looking at these, I think I'm going to go with Dr. Brett Kavanagh to lead this ship um, on board the USS Shengzhou. So let's get him on board and let's get him doing that floral study. It makes sense, he's a doctor. We're gonna uh, get him cracking on some of that biology work. Initiating communications. Okay, what do the Vulcans want? They want a migration treaty. We're gonna accept that. We're good friends with the Vulcans. Special project complete. And, oh, well, apparently the plants native to Mars to, turned out to be rather dull. Um, not much to be said there, but we did get a little bit of nice research out of that one. So we can get the Shengshu on with its next task. Um, Construction get complete. A nice research agreement with them. Technology discovered. Okay, let's have a look. Um, Vulcans want a defensive pact. I think that makes sense. We're friends with the Vulcans. We always have been. It's a good partnership there. Uh, let's get some mining station output boost on that one as well. Okay, so now then we're in a position here where we can start looking to expand. Um, tempted to go this way. We've got a few systems explored out here already. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and build a star base in the Ross 248 system. Um, and we do have the intrepid, the intrepid type destroyer, shall I say, now. Oh, and we can immediately go after the Yorktown class cruiser, which is quite advanced. Take us three years to obtain. The Yorktown ship is pretty powerful and it's pretty good. And we've also got the Warp Drive Mark II, which is also a great shout here. Um, some speed boost at this stage is quite useful. I'm going to go for the Warp Drive and hopefully get cracking on that. Now then, that pollen in Mars's atmosphere is causing an aphrodisiac effect. So giving everyone, everyone's getting high on Mars. Um, Marin Karin, they're calling it. Interesting. So um, we could leave this be and uh, increase the happiness of our population. Although we cannot allow mind altering particles in the atmosphere it does seem like a fairly, yeah, it does seem like a fairly thing. I don't really want everybody wandering around stoned. So let's, Let's get cracking on removing that, shall we? Discovered. Here we go. We've established communications with the United Planets An of Tella. Is making contact. I'm told this fleet is the pride and joy of Earth. I find it small and unimpressive. Much like you, then. Let's be friends with the Tellarites, shall we? And also, awesome. Okay, the silent enemy. Arriving at Shara, we've detected unusual intermittent subspace readings. Let's have a see what we discover. So, after a day in orbit of Shara with no progress in locating the source of the unusual subspace reading, Captain Gonzalez prepares to give the order to move on. However, some type of alien ship has appeared. So, it doesn't look like they want to talk. They are indeed the silent enemy. So we've got a few options here. We can attempt to follow them, we can wait for them to come back, or we can leave orbit. Hmm, what should we do here? Um, let's see what this ship wants. Let's attempt to follow them, shall we? Aha! Within minutes, the aliens come through the warp. Five minutes more and the ship has disappeared from sensors entirely. However, we've detected another subspace disturbance several light hours away. Arriving at the coordinates, the vessel appears to be attempting to widen the disturbance through attacking on a mission of unknown nature. However, as the Bonaventure draws nearer, the emissions are cut. The vessel raises its shields and powers up what appears to be weapon systems. We have two options here. We can hail them or we can fire. Let's try and hail them, see if we can make contact. 
The USS Bonaventure's communications officer repeats and all frequencies hail to the alien vessel. The British crew awaits a response in tense silence. Only the hum of the ship's engines in the background. An alert chimes. Transporter beams from the alien vessel have been detected throughout the ship and weapons fire warnings have been triggered across a number of decks. At the same time, the enemy vessel has warped away. The boarding action, apparently a distraction. Security teams, repel the borders. Security teams assemble throughout key sections of the ship, beam rifles in hand. The sound of the disruptor weapons ring through the corridors while crew report their own stun settings as being ineffective. So as we move through the ship, a team of combat veteran officers push through. Uh, we try and demand their surrender, but they don't seem to be wanting to engage with us. They converse briefly before firing at the cargo bay doors. The air in the cargo bay is pushed into space along with the remaining boarders and Captain Gonzalez. Emergency force fields are put in place around the section. And the ship is secured. However, the captain of the USS Bonaventure has been lost. This is a disaster. This is indeed a disaster. We mourn the loss of our brave captain, Enrique Gonzalez. The research that we gain from this is a small price to pay. We, we salute you, Captain Gonzalez. So, the USS Bonaventure needs a new commanding officer. I think we're going to go for Ilse van Gebster now. We'll recruit her. And uh, let's give her... So she seems to be a miracle worker, so let's, let's keep her on with that trait. Um, she seems to be doing well there. So where is she at the moment? Let's get her continuing to do some exploration. So, now that we've got that new warp drive technology, it looks like we've unlocked access to a few things here. Some alloy boosts and the grappler mechanism here, but I'm looking liking the look of the NX class light cruiser. Yeah, we do love the NX. Oh, the, the NX01 is such a great design, I think, personally. Um, oh, look, uh, we've entered orbit of Terra Nova, the location of one of Earth's first exosolar colonies. Which we lost contact with many, many years ago. Let's uh, let's investigate the colony's fate, shall we? Technology discovered. So, Captain Azakewi and the Belfast's waiting land the shuttle near the outskirts of the old colony. All scans reveal are empty buildings covered in rust and foliage. No signs of weapons fire or any sort of indication of what happened to the colony. We're going to have to keep looking around. Continue the search. So, after searching for several days and finding numerous away teams uh, in the area, all that is found on the log of an attempted communication with Earth requesting assistance. It's almost like there's an asteroid impact has destroyed the relay. We've not found out what's happened to the inhabitants. So, it looks like we're in a position where we can get our first intrepid type destroyer. I'm going to go ahead and get one of those use up a lot of our crew that we have here but uh, I want to keep this this fleet nice and upgraded and uh, want to make sure that we're well Survey defended complete okay so second chance eight years ago science officer Ren Yamaguchi was stationed at an outpost barely managing to beam off the research station the last personnel on the ground before an ionic disruption cut off the transporter connection so uh, what has happened here we've discovered complete copy of Ren Yamaguchi. Hmm. Could be a trick. We could lock him up. Um, let's beam him up to Bay and see if we can validate these claims of his. The duplicate Ren Yamaguchi's genes are confirmed to be an exact match. They're almost identical. Almost identical memories. So it's not a clone or a shapeshifter. So what is he? He is ah, a transported duplicate, and he's been living for eight years on his own. Wow. So um, we can use uh, we could use him to help fix the station and, and gather out some of the logs, or we can do that without his help. Let's uh, let's ask him to see if he can help us fix the station, shall we? So his plan to fix the damage is a bit risky. Um, may not be safe. Um, Let's, uh, in the words of Captain Jean-Luc Picard, make it so. 
So Ren Yamaguchi's duplicate was unable to repair the power conduit in the research station. When he had moved to repair it, the bridge collapsed, leaving him stranded. The original Ren Yamaguchi beamed down and was able to save his duplicate from the chasm. But unfortunately, we did not get capture the data before the transport window closed. Uh, in light of his exemplary performance, Ren Yamaguchi's duplicate was offered a position within the fleet reflecting his talents. So, yeah, absolutely, scientific data is not worth wasting a life. So let's just see. Do we get... We do, we get Commander Ren Yamaguchi here, uh, pacifist commander from Earth, um, able to join our fleet at some point. So we've got a couple of commanders, we're not really making use of them at the moment. Might hold on to Ren Yamaguchi, but not sure we need Giorgio Ferrari at this point in time, so we're going to let him go. And we've made contact with the Andorian Empire, finally. Our presence in the galaxy has not gone by unnoticed. Uh, the Vulcan's pet pig skin skins. Well, you are not as ugly as we are warned, but it remains to be seen if you can be trusted. Well, I am delighted to meet you, Andorians. Big fan of Andorians. I think they're great. Uh, the Enterprise did a great justice in the end. Shran was a brilliant character. So yeah, here we go. Uh, we're now at the site of Andoria, Vulcan, and Tella. Interesting, the four founding members of the Federation in close proximity. We'll see where we get Survey to. Complete. The Vulcan holy world of Pajem appears to be a paradox. It's interesting that it's a cultural holy world for a Vulcan logical culture. Um, let's have a look. Let's maybe dispatch a cultural mission to... Uh, the monastery on Pajem. See what we can find there. Long updated. And it looks like we have our uh, intrepid type destroyer available now um, here in Seoul, which boosts our fleet power considerably. I'm actually going to upgrade the rest of these ships with their new warp drives as well at this point. Uh, we've also unlocked the NX class light cruiser finally. So uh, let's be churning one of those out shortly as we. Uh, Continue the research. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think it makes sense to get ourselves an NX class ship. Okay, so Captain Ilza von Gebster has arrived at Pajem. Uh, she's had a nice little tour. Um, Takosh appears to be eager to send her on her way. So this appears odd. I wonder if we should investigate further. I think we, we're sort of people who are quite inquisitive. Let's uh, let's investigate this further. Ah, well, nothing. Uh, nothing, nothing amiss. Just uh, knowing the Vulcans. Um, although we did receive a nice little gift, some scrolls and some ancient Vulcan text, which is really nice. Uh, we've got a little bit of research out of that, which is very good. Okay, so we've got our first NX class starship, which I've decided to uh, rename for myself the Enterprise NX01, because you know we've got to, haven't you? Got to when it's the first of the uh, first of the class. Ships upgraded. Well, it turns out that the uh, captain was right to be curious about Pajem because Andorian special forces have discovered a uh, covert listening post beneath the monastery. Naughty Vulcans. Mm -hmm. So, unusual activity. For several weeks now, the United Earth Security has been attempting to trace a series of illegal database hacks. These intrusions have one thing in common. They're all targeted locations storing eugenics wars information from when genetically augmented humans dominated the Earth. That is worrying indeed. We should be cautious about this. Interesting. So this might be related to the hacks that we were experiencing before. Let's uh, let's send a fleet to Log investigate. Updated. So Captain, uh, or sorry, should I say Admiral Rosario is going to investigate with our fleet. Mm -hmm. Let's the Enterprise with her. So uh, the Sigma aliens turned out to be the Orion Free States. An alien empire is making contact. Archon Anaria and the ruling council of the Orion Free States have instructed me to bring you a warning. But oh, what a handsome human. Please come closer. Ooh, a big strong human could rescue us from our slavery. Shh. That's right. Closer still. Breathe deeply. Well, that's not creepy at all. Um, we have no desire for conflict with you, Orions. 
not a big fan. So, the United Earth Embassy on Vulcan has been the target of, an un of a successful terrorist attack. Several hundred human and Vulcan casualties have been reported. This is very unusual for Vulcan. Um, we should approve an investigation immediately. So, the Vulcan High Command has approved that request, so we're going to send Long some people updated. to investigate this. I'm going to send Dr. Brett Kavanagh, our scientists, to investigate Technology this. Technology discovered. Rella. Okay, let's have a look. So, oh dear. So, several vessels of an alien design have swarmed from the station. Red alert. Let's have a look at what's going on here. So it's still an augments fleet. Let's check out what's going on here. So, as you can see, we're engaged in a battle here with the renegade augments. Fantastic. So we've destroyed the enemy fleet attacking our research station. Looks like we're going to have to investigate Long that wreckage. Updated. So I'm going to send the USS Belfast in to investigate that. As this fleet returns home, battered, but victorious. Okay, after several days analysing the rubble from the embassy bombing on Vulcan, um, looks like Cyranites are the perpetrators. Interesting. Let's uh, let's continue our investigation. Brett Kavanagh's investigation has led him to the Vulcan's Forge, where the Cyranites are keeping a hidden commune. So let's progress forward. Okay, so shortly arriving at the sanctuary, Dr. Kavanagh meets with a number of Cyranites who try to explain that they are non-violent. Interesting. So, it looks like we're going to dive deeper into Vulcan's Forge and see what's going on. Okay, so it looks like we've found the Kir Shara, an ancient artifact said to contain the complete writings of Surak. Lost the time. So, Tapau and Brett Kavanaugh are going to see if they can locate it. So, uh,. Brett Kavanagh has attained the Katra of Surak in his mind. Kir Shara shows evidence of containing advanced storage and display technology. Okay, so we've got an option here where we can take this back to the Vulcan capital or take it to Earth. Now, I feel like it's, although it might be safer off world, we should potentially take this back to the capital. Ah, yes, so we've made it to the council chambers. Um, while many were awed by the presence of the Kirshara, Administrator Tamei reacted with an uncharacteristic anger and attempted to destroy the artifact. That's interesting indeed. So, we've discovered here that, oh dear, Dr. Kavanagh has been sentenced to life imprisonment in the Vulcan High Command. Okay, so we've uh, completed the Discovery Traditions tree. Um, hey, we completed Discovery without crying. There you go. So we've got access to some Ascension perks. Now, there's quite a few good ones in here. Some uh, Fleet Maneuvers, Final Frontier, but uh, I think keeping down the Discovery route, I'm going to take this Technological Ascendancy option here. Uh, will help boost our research going forward. Um, yeah, and give us potentially some rarer technologies as we go as well. Special project complete. Okay, so augmented realities. The debris has been sifted through. We've pieced together information regarding the carnate. A group of genetically engineered human augments but we seem to have ended their ambitions by destroying their fleet. It's great. Disaster averted. It's a nice little reward for us there. So it's time to pick uh, the Zhengzhou's new captain. Now it is uh, Eric Soong has disappeared. So we've got a choice between Trip and Hoshi. Um, so yeah, I think Trip comes with some great boosts here, and uh, once we get him onto our council, he gives us some nice boosters. So I'm gonna I'm gonna recruit Trip. 
uh, onto our fleet, and we're going to send him up to do some exploring back up here. Uh, and as we can see here, we've got our new NX class ship, second one in the fleet. Uh, as a little tip of the hat, because we are obsidian fleet, this is the uh, USS Atlantis NX05. Um, Becky will thank me for that one later. I'm sure she will. Okay, so we've done a decent job of expanding a little bit so far in this area. Um, we're running a bit low on influence at the moment, so expanding further is going to be a bit slow from now on. Um, thinking that it looks like we might, uh, rather than expanding outwards, we might just start to um, consolidate what we've got. So I'm going to start building a new starport in the uh, Etikasiope system, uh, where Terra Nova was. Um, Hopefully we can have a, have a second outfit Survey there complete. somewhere else to build some ships from. Okay, so we've got the Starbase in Etikasa OPA system now. So I'm thinking I might do is I might look at colonize, recolonizing really Terra Nova. Um, it's a lush planet, so we do get some nice habitability bonuses from that. So let's um, let's, let's colonize it again. But we're, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna go properly. It's gonna be Terra Nova in honor of those. That fell before. We're going to colonize that to get ourselves another colony. Uh oh, red alert. Soul monitoring stations are detecting an alien probe on direct course for Earth. All attempts to hail the probe have been met with silence, and as such, we must now presume the vessel to be hostile. Red alert! Okay. Time to go into action, Admiral. Rosario, with the Enterprise and Atlantis at the lead. Engaging enemy fleet. Technology discovered. I love how the music has now kicked in. The action music as we Technology this alien probe. Discovered. Great, so our fleet successfully prevented the alien probe from entering Earth orbit. Preliminary scans for the records indicate the probe carried a single-use condensed energy weapon, which would have been capable of destroying a large portion of Earth's surface. Okay, so we're celebrating the men and women of Starfleet who averted that tragedy. But, who sent this weapon of mass destruction and why? That is something that we're going to have to investigate. I think, at this point, we're going to leave our playthrough here. When we return we'll be understanding what's going on with this alien probe and uh, looking to deal with whoever it is that's responsible for launching an attack on the home of humanity. <laughs>